trying to make a maybe I, word for a second there. Uh, <laughs> maybe I am a Power Ranger. Oh. oh. <laughs> and we'll take a game break. <laughs> I told him. I'm not, just so you all know, I'm, I'm really not a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. I know, you guys thought I could be, though. <laughs> and we'll take a game break to try out the Shooter Child of Eden and a new game from Tim Shayer. <laughs> yes. Then, let me uh, ask a quick question, if I may. You guys think you can trust your car? Yeah. Well, you're wrong! Oh. I don't know why I got so angry about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today we investigate the personal data that your car might be broadcasting to data thieves and the police. Oh. The police, huh? Let me say it where I'm from. Antioch, California. Police. <laughs> police. Plus, today's gadget prawn is the little tablet that could, the Aww. HTC Flyer. Yeah. It's an Android, it's half an inch thick, it comes pre-installed with Chris Hardwick. Yeah. So you're gonna love it. And Sarah Underwood takes a naked bike ride. Woo! Yeah, we like that. Pinch me. <laughs> Portland's, ow, traditional yeah. ride of nude cyclists is finally something you'll really care about. We I've promise. seen it 15 <laughs> times already. <laughs> Web frame pageant. by frame. <laughs> In reverse. Today, you guys uh, play the Modern Warfare 3? You guys uh, dab a little bit? You know, your, your character in it, he kind of heroically repels down the sides of mountains and he takes mm -hmm. out terrorists and stuff. And he looks like a total badass in the process, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, remove the word bad from badass and you've got this guy. Hey, we're at 40 seconds. Yeah, 45 now. Oh. <laughs> Let's hit it one more time. A, it was it was a sideways belly flop like that. <laughs> impressive. It was like right on his face. Yeah, a face that's, flop. That's why I don't do outside. I just don't do. I At will all. climb a hill in World no of Warcraft, outside. and that's about it. I won't even go near an REI. I don't trust myself <laughs> in places like that. But if Bruce Rain, Rain were smart, he would make a video to prove that he's uh, not Batman. He would basically do that to prove it. Well, Bruce Wayne's not a real person. You have so much to learn. <laughs> And at number four, meet Bad Bob! Oh, Bad Bob! He's a gunslinger who would have ruled the Wild West if he would have been alive in the 1800s. But in the 20th century, he's reduced to this. Nobody does anything faster than what I do with guns. Can you give it a comparison to something that would come close but is not as fast? Speed of light, which is far beyond it. Right. There is nothing next to it. Now you say, no, what are you talking about? I said, well, I mean, and then I have to show you. Now, in terms of time, Bob, how quick was that? I draw a cock level, fire this gun, hit what I'm shooting at in less than two one hundredths of one second. The idea is to shoot the gun fast twice. Now, now let's give it a try, and I'll try and do it right the first try, okay? Okay, go ahead. Good luck to you. Okay. Harmony profile is like. <laughs> oh, hopefully he doesn't mention being quick on the draw. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! That's you got a wet wet. What? Can we? Can I approve this wet wet? No. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Don't, I'm please, approving just, this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
Now, you seem to be somewhat impressed with that guy off the shooting shows. Would you ever. have sex with a guy like that? Because it was that good? All the villagers came out to watch that. That was cool. Did you see those villagers? Yeah. What are we going to do next? Are we going to ford the river? What should we do? It's very Oregon Trail. No, that, that doesn't Oregon make me excited in that way. I just get excited. <laughs> I just, I think it's cool. That's all. <laughs> that. I would love to see that guy on a date. I would love to be. Yeah, you on have a no date. No idea what I do to your me. lady parts. Seriously. That was really. Two hundred. There's no, there's no words in the English language I could describe it. You would need Chinese watercolors and calligraphy, and semaphore. <laughs> and that's the only way you can describe what I would do to your downstairs mix-up. Now come here. <laughs> Quicker than you can blink your eyes. Come here. I need some glasses and a cowboy hat, please. <laughs> from me. He's totally <laughs> creeping me out right now. <laughs> and a number three. That was a three on my creep meter, by the way. <laughs> well, I don't need to see any higher. No. Okay. No. <laughs> and a number three, a review of the Japanese video game 98 Koshien, which was made in 1998. Yeah. Wait, why are we watching this? Well, Candace, even though this stickball adventure is over 12 years old, it features some of the fanciest ball throwing that uh, I have... You mean pitching? Ball throwing. <laughs> All right, first technique, the rolling thunder. There it is. It's, it's a little for the rookies. It's a pretty well-known uh, pitching approach, but it's really effective when used in games. It makes it very difficult for the batter to read the pitch. Now, this next pitching stance is only attempted by the bravest of souls. It requires extreme flexibility. I'm not going to lie. You have to be more limber than water itself in order to pull this off, but if you can... You will never, ever have someone hit a home run off you. Now this next one, just have sex with the pitcher's mound. Simple as that. Look at that. Just like having sex with a beaver. Now this pitch here is extremely difficult to pull off. You have to fake a suicide, and right when they think you're dead, hit them with a the pitch. Now I would imagine this next one looks pretty easy, but you'd be surprised at how effective it is. Oh, you got a hit? That's fine. Come on, get him. Get him. Oh, yes! That is awesome. Some amazing yeah. moves. The, uh, to be fair, the sex with the mound one is the reason I can't go to Little League games anymore. So, <laughs> One word of caution, by the way. Be careful if you order the instructional video, Japanese Pitching and Catching. <laughs> and, End up on a watch list. <laughs> it will make you a better ball thrower, and it may not clear customs. It may make you a better ball thrower, but... It will be pixelated, and they'll be wearing uniforms. They're not of the baseball variety. <laughs> they do use bats, though. Oh, okay. okay. Which is interesting. And I, go, I, I think right. they go with aluminum. It sounds more interesting when it thuds, and it's not as risky as wood. Are you done? I can be. Please. <laughs> Today's number two is the rarest of rare videos, a clip from Russia that doesn't involve alcohol. Oh! Really? Who knew they existed? Russian lady rides a scooter. Russian. Oops. <laughs> Zero to blood curdling scream in about one second. That was great. Just an FYI, if the title of your video begins with Russian lady rides, mm. Kevin will click on it. That's this. true. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even Always. I don't even care what she's riding. If I I will stop and click it. You have me at hello. If it says Russian lady rides dot 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 click 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 click, I could be in the middle of anything and I'm never disappointed. So please, you want me to click it? That's what you're right. All right, still ahead, a gorilla gets funky. Ah uh, yeah, see the dance craze that's sweeping our zoos. And the number one ATM is coming up. ATN featured a motorized mom's massive fail. Tell us, what brand of scooter is she driving? Tweet us your responses at AOTS hashtag OMG ROF LOL. If we lose control over your response, we'll feature it on Friday's show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a break dancing gorilla. Yeah. For reals. Well, 
Not really, but it Why is... do you destroy my dreams? I'm sorry, Kevin, but it's not really. But it is a gorilla from the Calgary Zoo playing around in water and set to some energetic dance music. Right, which makes it look... Like, like... it's a break dancer, yes. Thank you. <laughs> video I thought we were gonna play that is I mean that was great and cute for the tweens but that's not the best breakdancing gorilla that I've ever seen let me just say that oh. yeah. okay how on earth could you have ever seen another breakdancing gorilla um, it's called being cultured Candace you should really look into it sometime I'm so sure Kevin look everyone knows and I mean everybody but Candace knows that the best <laughs> gorilla breakdancer is mm -hmm. mix master Coco Don't, don't pay attention to her, Coco. She's uncultured. I am not! That is Mixmaster Coco, all right? Hi. He's the world's most amazing breakdancing gorilla slash DJ. And he's here for a very rare television performance. He doesn't do this. It's a favor to me, and I appreciate it, Coco. One love. Right. Two loves. You can do two of them. Okay. Extra love for you. How did you meet Mixmaster Coco? <laughs> Let's just say things got uh, things got real at the Viper Room last week. <laughs> was, uh, broke a couple lights, threw a couple drinks, whatever. Really? Mixmaster Coco, stage is yours, brother. Take it on. Okay. Give it up for Mixmaster Coco! Yeah. The tape uh, rip. Is he okay? Because he looks angry. No, he looks really pissed. Yeah. No, 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 Kevin. No, this is great. Oh my god, no, this is. Uh, I think it's a good act. I'm sure. I'm sure. Kevin, he looks mad. No, he looks really. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Get him, Kevin! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! That's on fire! We haven't done this since Coachella! This is a rare thing! Okay, that's how you play it. Oh my god! It's like an honor. No, 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 no take a bite. No, 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 I'm okay. Something you use every day could be tracking your exact location and sending that information to big businesses and the government. The culprit isn't your smartphone or Facebook, it's your car. Owners of TomTom Tom GPS units found this out the hard way when their own GPS data was used against them. In April of 2011, the Dutch police force paid for anonymous data that TomTom Tom collected wirelessly from GPS units. The data included each car's position and time of day at that position. From this, the police were able to determine each car's speed. Then, they simply set up speed traps and cameras and caught the very drivers who unwittingly gave the cops everything they needed. TomTom Tom claims they didn't know how the data would be used, and they have since publicly apologized for selling their customers' information. But if you don't think something like this could happen here in the good old U.S. of A., think again. Just last week, a privacy hole was discovered in Nissan's new electric vehicle, the Leaf. The car's onboard computer system called Car Wings provides drivers with directions, the latest news via RSS, and weather reports. It also uploads information about your fuel economy to the Car Wings website. But Casey Halverson of SeattleWireless.net discovered that Leaf drivers were sharing much more than that. Companies including CNN, Fox News, and the Weather Channel received data from Leaf drivers, including their exact location, the car's direction of travel, the program destination, and the car's current speed. You are on SW-point-RD at Federal Way. You are traveling at 39 miles per hour. There was no evidence that the data was used by the Car Wings content providers or the government, but it could have been easily abused. 
Less than three days after Halverson discovered this privacy hole, Nissan fixed the car wing systems on their end, so this data would no longer be transmitted to third parties. Still, this leads us to wonder what other devices are betraying our every move to advertisers, or worse, to law enforcement. Other than throwing your GPS out the window, here's how you can protect yourself. First, now that you're aware this leak exists, you can be on the lookout for it when you buy a new car or GPS and educate your friends and family. Second, when given the choice, always say no to sharing personal data on any device. Even if it's collected anonymously, opt out. And third, if there's no opt out option or you're unable to find it within the device's settings menu, call the manufacturer and make sure you're protected. Behind the wheel or out on foot, protecting your privacy is important. Don't unknowingly give away any of your personal data. It could wind up in the wrong hands, and once it's out there, you can't get it back. We are the show on TV that goes from a gorilla dismembering people to the serious privacy package. <laughs> I love this show. Um, but brace yourselves. Morgan Webb and I are back. We're going to do a game break, and guess what? It's a doubleheader. Yeah. Oh. Please welcome back X Plays Morgan Webb. Thank you very much. Okay, we got to get started. You got a lot of time. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do. First up, uh, <laughs> the game from Tetsuya Mizuguchi, one of my favorites, Child of yes. Eden. It's basically the spiritual successor to Rez. It basically is which Rez. Which was an amazing game. Kind of throw that out there. It's, it's, it's Rez with it's, multiple guns. Yeah, it's, so it's rhythm based music, shooter. Uh, it, it has these like live action things. Uh, this, the beginning feels a little like a Pocky commercial in Japan. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, I'm like waiting for a ramen bowl to pop up with animated know. characters and it's like, oh, so good. But you know what? She really does, like, she kind of appears in the background and you really do want to save her. Mm -hmm. um, you have to kind of lock onto the enemies. It is a shooter. Um, but it's, it's a shooter, and, and every enemy that you lock on, every enemy that you kill, yes. every power up that you earn or use, somehow affects the music or the beat of the level. So right. it's to induce that sort of synesthesia feel. And you get more points if you um, kill things on the beat. Mm -hmm. I'm not at that level yet, but yeah. conceptually that is possible. Well, and I can, and I'm looking at it here, and I'm, I'm thinking clearly this is someone playing with the controller. But it says right. on the box. Better with Connect. Right, and you played with Connect. Yeah. I didn't play with Connect, so I want to know what your experience First was. First of all, the game should come with rolling papers. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> like, all of Mizuguchi's games should. Like, yeah, they go better know. with Connect and yeah. with marijuana. Yeah. Um, but I played it using Connect, and, and at first I was like, I was getting into it. I'm like, okay, yeah. this is great, and I'm shooting enemies and locking on. But first of all, the Connect is not very good at tracking a limb when it passes in front of your torso. It kind of loses sight of what that is. And w when you get in there, the cursor might hop around a little bit. And in this game, when you're past level one, as you know, like you have to lock onto every enemy. You have to do yes. very good, or you're going to get crushed. Right. And and you're constantly flipping your arm out in front of you. And I got like tennis elbow by level three. So it was cool in concept, but I felt it was a little too difficult and a little too inconsistent to be enjoyable with the Kinect controller. And, and it definitely does have a level of difficulty because yeah. you think at first you're like, oh, it locks on. How hard is this going to be? I'm going to ace this. And then like the seventh time you've played a level to get enough stars to move on, you're like. I'm just gonna take a break yeah, for like a minute, yeah, and then I'm gonna go back to it. But you play with the controller, though. Was it a better controller. experience? It, it sounds like it was a better experience. Mm -hmm. However, I did find myself thinking it would be cool to experience it with Connect. Yeah, I mean, I definitely the first level, great. Past that, I mean, I managed to get to like level four using the Connect. Yeah. But then by then, I literally thought my arm was going to fall off. Like it I was, bet. it was a lot of time and trouble. But, yes. Um, I, I, I'm still a huge fan of the game. I'll go back and beat it with the controller. Uh, did you yes. enjoy it? Love, love, love. This is a five out of five. Oh, Everybody awesome. should yeah, definitely awesome. pick yeah. it up. Check it out. It'll also really put us, if you're having a bad day, this game will put a smile on your face. I agree. As I agree. these purple lotuses are blooming on your television, right. you're like, When you I light up the space whale and it turns into a sky phoenix, and you're like, <laughs> all right, Japanese developer, you got it. You got That's me. That's cool. <laughs> Mushrooms. Uh, next, we have another downloadable game. This is from Tim Schafer and Double Fine. Yes. Uh, we love Double Fine. We love everything they touch. And Trenched is a tower defense third-person yeah, shooter. It's, it's a third-person tower defense game, which is totally bizarre. And yeah. you're basically uh, a super intelligent uh, army guy, and you invent these trenches, which are, let's be honest, they're mechs. They're I don't mechs, know why yeah. we're calling them trenches. Um, and you're fighting against another super intelligent army guy in this alternate universe. The point is, is that you have to kind of set defenses and set turrets, and then you can also use your 
back to shoot people. And some people hear tower defense and they go, I don't know what that is. It's basically, oh, yeah. it's plant, plants versus plants zombies. Plants versus zombies, field runners mechs. is another example. Yeah, yeah. The great thing about this is you can actually play co-op. Oh, that's so cool. up to four people, so you and your friends can all get together and enjoy the game together. The enemies are going to be much harder, but you can talk and make strategies and plan, and that's really where the fun comes in. And is in. it fluid from, okay, I'm running around on foot as a mech, upgrading my mech, and then I'm putting objects in the ground to defend yeah, as well? Yeah, you actually sort of target where you want the object to go, and then you can just select, and it just drops down out of the sky. And, and then you can uh, upgrade your mech with sniper weapons and shotguns and cannons and all sorts of things. So there's yeah. a lot of fun options. I love it. Uh, huge, yeah. again, huge Tim Chafer fan. I know you are totally. as well. As such, is Trenched worth the download? Uh, it is a four out of five. It is $15 oh, okay. for a okay. seven to eight hour campaign for $15 plus all That's of the really multiplayer good. you can yeah. get. It's a great deal. I love it. Two great games and one great Morgan Webb, everybody. Yay! Thank you, Ms. Webb, for coming by. Uh, both Child of Eden and Trenched are out right now, but now we send it over to Miss Candace. Hi, Candace! Hey, guys! Hi! Because I'm far away from you. Hi. Still ahead, did Marvel Comics just kill Spider-Man for good? Whoa. Sarah Underwood has all the details in the feed. Plus, oh, no! Oh, that's weird. <laughs> hey! When she's done learning you, Sarah Underwood gets naked on a bike. Six days without a serious workplace injury! Wednesday, June 22nd, and here are your top stories. Spider-Man is dead. Whoa. Or ultimate Spider-Man, that is, sorry. Today, in issue 160, the web-slinging hero sacrificed his life to save Aunt May from the Green Goblin. And series writer and creator Brian Michael Bendis says this time, dead really does mean dead. Now, don't worry, the regular Spider-Man is still alive, but the hugely popular ultimate version of Peter Parker, created in 2000, has just made the ultimate sacrifice. The issue is rapidly selling out, and the series will relaunch this September with an all-new character taking over the role of Ultimate Spider-Man. And uh, congratulations, Apple, on your brand new patent. <laughs> After a three and a half year battle, the US Patent Office has awarded Apple with the official claim on touchscreen technology for portable multifunction devices, you know, smartphones and tablets. This decision could give Apple leverage to demand that other smartphone and tablet manufacturers pay them license fees oh. or bully them out of the US market entirely. Oh. But Apple would never play hardball like that, right? No, never. <laughs> and apparently, it's not just, thank you. And apparently it's not just the comic book Spider-Man who's having a bad week. Former crime-fighting web-slinger Tobey Maguire is being sued for his part in an unlicensed high-stakes poker game. The reason we're all hearing about it is because one of the players, a now not-so-wealthy businessman, started a Ponzi scheme to get out from under his massive gambling debts. One source whispered that Maguire won an average of $1 million a month over a three-year period. Yeah! Other celebrities identified as part of the poker ring but not being sued include Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Caprio, betting millions in high-stakes poker games. Stars, they're just like us. <laughs> I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Now back over to Candace. Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. You're looking mighty beautiful today. Thanks, Candy. Today's viewer poll presented by AT&T is... What's your opinion on Marvel killing off Spider-Man? Log on to G4TV.com to vote now, and we'll have the results later after the show. And now it's time to play with a tiny little tablet. Traveling around with a 10-inch tablet is not the easiest thing in the world, which is why HTC made the flyer. Weighing under a pound and only half an inch thick, this little tablet utilizes a 7-inch multi-touch screen and HTC Scribe technology, so you can touch and draw all over everything. You'll also get front and rear cameras along with the Android 2.3 experience, all for 500 bucks. Please welcome friend to Man and Tech, Chris Hardwick. Hello. <laughs> Those are some nice shots. Ow! I'm sorry, I was just thinking about myself. Uh, Here it is! 
<laughs> so, so, no, it's a very set up. Here it is, the flyer. Uh, you know, it seems really heavy for being this size. Yeah, I mean, I it's, was surprised. It's not. It's pretty close to the to the iPad, but but because it's smaller and it's denser, and so it's it's heavier per square inch. I don't um, like that. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, <laughs> I guess that's I don't a like review. It. Uh, <laughs> it's thicker than the iPad 2 and the BlackBerry Playbook as well. Yeah. So you can see there. You can see there on the side. It's a little bit. It's a little bit thicker right there. And I'm a little shocked they didn't use Android 3.0 for this. Why? Why do you think that is? Uh, I'm not sure. I missed a key board meeting at HTC, so I didn't really get that information. <laughs> Come but the, on, Chris. I will tell you that the screen is just as responsive as other Android uh, devices, so so that's a pretty good thing. Whether or not they use Android 3.0 or 2.3, it also has the latest version of HTC Sense on it, so you'll be able to customize and add widgets as much as you like. Look at the Yay! you'll be. Yay! Like a widget wizard. Uh, <laughs> we wish it did have Android 3.0, mainly for the tab browsing and to access Android tablet apps, and so, but it doesn't. But what's the deal with the stylus? <laughs> I it, well, first of all, <laughs> adorable. Uh, <laughs> it's made specifically for drawing and taking notes, not actually navigating on the tablet. So there's only really a handful of apps that, that can use it. It doesn't look like you can fit much writing on it. No, you really can't, uh, especially if you write that big. Uh, you can draw <laughs> over. See if you write smaller, you can fit more. Uh, it's smaller over screenshots, or you can take notes with Evernote, which is great. I use Evernote. It's it's terrific. Uh, it's kind of fun to have. We're not sure if it's worth an extra 80 bucks. 80 bucks. 80 dollars. 80 dollars no. for the stylus. It may not be. Listen, and when Apple when Apple outlaws things. all other capacitive t touch devices, <laughs> it's not even really going to matter anymore. <laughs> it's really not even going to matter. And this has one of the fastest processors we've seen on a tablet, right? Yes, yes, and it absolutely makes a difference. It's able to load flash heavy sites super quick. In some cases, quicker than other Android 3.0 tablets. Also, just as fast as the iPad 2 when launching apps like. Angry Birds Rio. Oh, it's just as fast. That's right. Faster. I, there, there you can see right there with your own eyes. There it is. It was faster. Now, Yay. front and back cameras, are they anything special? Uh, I say meh. M-E-H oh, period. The back one is five megapixels. That would have blown my mind four years ago, but now I'm kind of a bastard about it. Uh, <laughs> there's no flash, so anything in low light is going to blur. Otherwise, the pictures look good. The front camera is standard at 1.3 megapixels. works. Ah, it's Bruce Green. What? A, oh. I thought he died. He got hit with a lady who's laughing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you obvious things. Uh, it, the front camera works just like it should. All right. It's 500 bucks at BestBuy.com. A little pricey. So what's the verdict? The verdict is three out of five. It's not a bad tablet by any means. It works well for some of the and and, and eighty bucks for for the stylus Come on. for the stylus. So that doesn't even do yeah, much. Yeah, we prefer Android three point tablets, and you know, like I said, you you can buy. There's an Asus uh, larger that's like a hundred dollars less that you can buy. So there that's you go. That's the one you go for. All right. All right, that's it for Gadget Prime. Chris, wait, whoa, come whoa. back here. What? So what else have you been up to lately? Oh, just web souping it. Yay! Coming up, it's another back cracking. Zach Shalakin. Oh my god! World oh. Soup. On today's show, Space Gets Sexy with a dope film star, April O'Neil. Plus, shower pranks, talkative cranks. The little boys, wee wees. And of course, young Brazilian men systematically stripping the flesh from their buttocks. It's an all new Web Soup coming up next. There's plenty more where that came from. An all-new episode of Web Soup Comedy Yay! Broadcast starts right after Attack of the Show. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Candace Bailey. And now over to Kevin. Let's Yay, go. over to me. Yay. Stay tuned. Moon Bloodgood from Falling Skies Yay! is here live. Yay! We're going to talk about the newest batch of aliens who want to destroy humanity. Yay! Oh, and guess what? Later on, Sarah Underwood and a thousand Yay! new friends Yay! ride bikes through the streets of Portland. Yay! And then... The feed is brought to you by Mitchum, 48 hours a day. Fail. Your dad. Major fail. 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 Fail, 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 fail. You lose.
trying to protect humanity from an alien invasion while also being totally hot. I'm sorry, I have to. Please welcome back to the program, Moon Blood Good, everybody! Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, first, well, do we want to talk about go-go dancing, or should we just get right to Falling Skies? Right. Because yeah, we were having a fascinating conversation in the commercial break. <laughs> I want to talk about the lies you told your mother <laughs> at the age of 16 when you would go into clubs to yeah. dance. Well, because I was a dancer, and I really loved the craft of dancing. I really wasn't drinking. Me and my best friend, we were sneaking off to L.A., mm -hmm. and we were going clubbing just to dance. And we'd dance up on stage, and yeah, no, Mom didn't really know. Did Mom think you were at study sessions? Or oh, what yeah. Did, did you a good little Asian girl, right? <laughs> studying. I was a, I I was at the all-night library. Why do you need those thigh-high fuzzy boots to play violin, sweetheart? First of all, I, just I didn't don't do thigh-high fuzzy know? boots. Okay, I I don't remember what I what wore. What was the typical I'm sure, outfit? Yeah, I'm sure it was a little risque, but I don't. I wasn't into the boots. No. I remember. I think I was wearing like baggy jeans. It was like hip hop. And kind of like, you know, maybe showing my midriff. And oh, scandalous. Very scandalous. Scandalous. I yeah, love it. I think well, I had abs back then. Did, yeah. did mom know? Does mom know now? Or is this mom mom's knows first now. time finding out? Yeah, oh, you, you, are, yeah. you are not. You are not throwing me under the bus. <laughs> she does know. <laughs> she knows. Of course she does. Uh, your mom watches our now. show religiously, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, she's really into <laughs> Let's Let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Falling Skies. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Huge, yeah. huge yeah. premiere. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, did you did you know I mean like is there a sense when you're on set like okay this is gonna we're gonna get 5.9 million viewers no problem Have that's what no we're gonna get no idea no never idea? know you never know like how people are gonna receive it you mm -hmm. always hope but it's hard to be objective when mm -hmm. you're working on it certainly when you're looking at some of the the green screens and you're thinking God I hope we can pull this off is this it is not silly are you just staring at a monster made of tennis balls and tracking tape and you're like oh I hope I hope <laughs> they really put an them? alien there yeah <laughs> well some of it one of one of the uh, aliens there was actually like a puppet suit there was a guy in there who could barely breathe and I had some interaction with him yeah and there's other guys kind of handling his couldn't, many legs they couldn't cut an air hole for him or something they or? were trying to I remember the medic was there but it was hard it was hard because it was the way it was made I know it was crazy the that on set guy. medic is there trying to save your stunt guy yeah, in an alien costume it, yeah what's well, part of the job no it's better he can barely speak because he's running out of oxygen he sounds like an alien let's go with it <laughs> who's yeah. this guy um, Spielberg that's been Spielberg, coming out yeah. to set he's, an, he? he's this up and coming director uh -huh. um, real real talent um, um, he used to go to the clubs to watch the go-go dancers? Yeah, that's yeah. actually where Is he discovered me. He was like, I'm going to put you in my alien show. <laughs> um, he did come to set, and we were doing the really? pilot. Yeah, we were in Toronto, and he was so sweet and kind of came up to each one of us individually. And uh, just it knew something about each one of us. Very nice that's guy. That's a little weird. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you go go dance, right? <laughs> Circa 1995. Yeah. Like, I know your favorite beverage is Coke Zero, is it not? <laughs> what the hell? You had six of them last night when you were cruising the internet. He's actually an <laughs> did, did you get the sense that he could just crush everybody's career as he was floating around, or is he just not that guy? He's he wasn't, just like, levitating and... yet. I hadn't <laughs> seen that yet. He wasn't David Blaining around no, the set? No, he wasn't. But um, certainly, like, you think, God, this man is so powerful and yeah. yet so sweet and humble and just super cool and just master of, like, storytelling and science fiction. And you've been a fan. I mean, you're a fan of sci-fi in general, Love right? It. You've been a fan yeah. of Outrageous. I Love heard that you, you used to fall asleep to like really crazy sci-fi and horror films like I, as a I, baby that would not as you? a baby oh but, okay uh, i heard it was like when you were yeah. younger well, no probably like in the last 10 years i would sort of put it on and anything from like alien to blade runner it was exorcism at some point but i was having nightmares <laughs> well, Night I there's a reason dark. for that i'm really but i find it relaxing it like mentally stimulates me and i feel like uh, i don't know like i can go into another world i like the darkness it's normally like white noise generators or sounds yeah. of like waves washing Sure. I always know that that's like not the real deal. Right. Like, you I'm want Satan screaming at your soul. <laughs> and you're like, mm, now I'm cuddly. <laughs> I want the devil what, right there. What were the nightmares? What were you ha were you, did you think you were in The Exorcist? Or did you think no, Freddy I was just, coming? Or? I was always having those dreams like somebody's chasing you, you know, just like getting stabbed in the chest. You know, really, oh, like, really light, really light, you know, <laughs> like light dreams. Fairy tale dreams, yeah. of course. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, now you're going to you're go, you've, you've done the Comic Con thing a handful of times, but this year are you going to do uh, a costume? Are you going to go as one of the skitters? Are you going to? God, you know, one of the girls on our show tried to dress up as a skitter for Halloween. It's kind of a hard costume to put together. I, I think I'm imagine. just going to go like I'm going to just wear my bell bottoms. I'm not going to like try to look like an alien. Nothing fancy. No. No go go dancer. I'm exotic, attire. just the way I am. I don't need to like push it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I fully agree. Well, I hope to see you down there. And yeah, and you're going to be there. Of again, course. Of course, yes. yes. Uh, and congrats and a half on Falling Skies because it's Thank awesome. You. And it's so well. Thank you. Thank you so again. much. Bruno, it was an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Nice I, I hope you. your mom doesn't I yell at you. Have fun at your rave. Uh, what? <laughs> Moon Blood Good, everybody. Pay no attention to that last remark. Falling Skies air Sundays on TNT. Still ahead. It's
place. The moment you've all been waiting for, Sarah Underwood's Naked Biker. It's a family Woo! show. Wow. Family show. They say there's no such thing as a free ride, but luckily they don't say the same thing about free beats. Post-punk laptop rapper MC Lars is embracing music piracy with the first in a series of free mixtapes. The 18-track indie rocket science includes collaborations with KRS-One, MC Chris, Weird Science, and MC Frontalot. MC Lars believes once you hear him spitting rhymes, you'll rush out to see him on this year's Vans Warp Tour, and we think he's onto something. If what you're craving are dirty synths and heavy beats to lose yourself in, get ready for the long-awaited return of Atari Teenage Riot. After a 12-year absence, ATR are back with what they call a protest album for the Google Age. Let the revolution begin with a special remix of the track Activate, which you'll find on the band's new release, Is This Hyper Real? If you're looking for something more melodic, the indie sounds of scattered trees may be more of your thing. While the haunting sounds from their new album, Sympathy, helps the band recover from death and illness in their family, it's their single, Love and Leave, We Can't Get Over. And not just because its video shows what happens when a stormtrooper falls in love with a Jedi princess. All three songs are gifts from the artist to you. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to g4tv.com slash freebeats and grab yourself some tunes. We head to the cantina, throw back a few drinks, and if you're lucky, I'll show you my tattoo weenie. <laughs> Galactic Encounter. Coming up tomorrow on an all new Attack of the Show. Michael Rappaport and Fife from A Tribe Called Quest drop by the studio with their new documentary on the hip hop group. Then we examine how sites like Google and Facebook may be hiding controversial and opposing views from you in AOTS Investigates. And we rate the HP Veer on Gadgetron. This tiny 4G smartphone has a slide out keyboard, yet is only two and a half inches wide. See it tomorrow. Here are the results from today's viewer poll presented by AT&T. Yeah! Yeah! We asked you what you think of Marvel killing Spider-Man. Well, the results are in and 63% say it doesn't matter because he'll be back web-slinging in six months anyway. <laughs> All right, now over to Kevin and Sarah. Hi, I went bike riding in Portland last week. Yeah. It was super fun. Everyone sure smiled at me a lot. <laughs> and, wh and why was that? Because <laughs> I was naked! <laughs> back home in Portland. It's raining, but I never let that get me down because I'm about to go cruise the street with 10,000 friends, or 10,000 naked friends, that is, because I got a date with the World Naked Bike Ride. Now, if you excuse me, I got to slip into something a little more comfortable. World Naked Bike Ride is a worldwide event where people in all different cities get together and ride their bikes naked through the street. We're doing this for a bunch of really cool reasons. We're going to be protesting our dependency on oil, showing that cycling is a viable alternative. And we're also going to show that we're vulnerable as road users. Everybody's got their 3,000 pound tons of steel and we're just out there naked on the streets. Love it! I want to try your big bicycle. All right, this is a really big bike. It's literally as tall as me. So how do I get on this thing? Uh, just like any other bike, one foot at a time, man. I'll hold it for you, though, so okay. you get up nice and safe. Just right put here. that foot on there. Yep. Okay. And come on up. OK. Uh, OK. That's right. Both All right. On the back. You got to hold the knee. I got okay. you. Uh, You're good. It's, it's just like a bike. Uh, uh, ow, it's hurting my crotch. It feels amazing from up here. What made you guys do the World Naked Bike Ride? Honestly, 
like, uh, this is my best friend, Kara. She called me up last night and was like, why not naked bike ride through Portland? And I was like, let's do it. Let's, we're home for college. Let's have a great time. So we're, that's why we're here. Is this your first time doing it? It is, yes. We're naked bike ride virgins, and we're breaking that tonight. Everyone should be naked once in their life in front of everyone, I think. I agree. Let's get naked and ride around this town. Skateboarding, what's up with that? I don't know, we, we just got to rep the, the pee pee squad, you know? We're just here to like skate, shred it up, you know? Rock out with our out. For guys, like, it's got to be a little intimidating, like, being naked in front of all these people. You feel like you're gonna like get judged or anything like that? Like, yeah, no? It's not a big deal until Homeboy starts doing the helicopter, and I'm just like. <laughs> Chris never hangs out till the end of the show. That's weird. <laughs> we gotta come back there, Chris. Where did he come from? <laughs> We're gonna have more naked bike ride footage and outtakes in Friday's show, uh, so so don't miss that. I'm uh, sure they won't miss that. <laughs> how much do you think the seat would fetch on eBay? Just out of curiosity. Oh, Kevin! What? I'm for charity, a good cause. Why would you sell it? What? <laughs> That's true. I don't know. I'm not gonna even entertain Is that. Is it really question. that cold? It was freezing. Yeah. It was below 50. Oh my gosh. Poor thing. Poor oh. thing. <laughs> well, you looked you looked nice. I was talking about Sarah. Else. <laughs> yeah. Get the <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's like a Sarah. monolith for nerds. Sarah, Thanks you were the one guess. person that could wear nothing and get away with it. Thanks to our guests, Ben Bloodgood, be <laughs> Morgan Webb, Chris Hardwick, and of course, Sarah Underwood for taking it all off. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>